Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. I have something interesting for you today as I recently stumbled across a video from Benny Hinn where he was discussing false prophecies and false prophets. And in that video, he is basically setting forth his standard for what would make somebody a false prophet. So what we're going to do in our video is we are going to take those standards from Benny Hinn's mouth and we are going to compare his ministry by his own standards. And well, We'll just see how he does. But before we get to that assessment, if you guys want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. All right, we're ready to go. So let's let Benny start with his teaching on what would make somebody a false prophet. And I think this is a very, fam fa very familiar portion, but it says they have a form of godliness. Now, what, what is that? They have a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof from such turn away. Okay, now here it, it, it explains it. <clears throat> so when you, when you read about what is a form of godliness, well, it begins really by uh, quite a bit that it says prior to that, where they are lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents and so forth. But look at this thing that is, is, I think, very, very telling. It says, for this sort, verse 6, for this sort, he's talking about those who, who, who come as, the, uh, as though they are, they are godly, are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. So they are the ones, and the, uh, what, what we saw earlier in this, in this portion, you can go read it for yourselves. It says they are, they are covetous. All right, so the first thing that Benny Hinn talks about is somebody being covetous, that is greedy. Well, since he is talking so much about that, I am certain there's no chance that Benny Hinn would have demonstrated the fact that he is covetous or greedy at any point during his ministry, right? If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harvest. Hmm. Asking people to give larger amounts to his ministry so that they can give a larger blessing. I'm sure that's not covetous at all. But just in case we have any questions, let's listen to Costi Hinn. This is Benny Hinn's own nephew who worked in Benny Hinn's ministry talk about how Uncle Benny used the money that he received. Working with him and really growing up in the inner circle of the faith healing and prosperity gospel and word of faith movement and add all the others, charismatic, third wave, all of that, uh, I saw where the money went. I knew why we would begin to fundraise harder at certain times throughout the year based on spending and whatnot. And uh, it's a lifestyle that is built for us on the backs of the sick and the poor, and donations are key to maintaining that lifestyle. And, but when I say lifestyle, I mean excessive lifestyle. Uh, homes and properties upwards of $10 million, and I'm being conservative so that I'm my integrity is intact and we don't exaggerate, but the number gets a lot higher when you add in multiple properties. Uh, our hotel, when I traveled, one of my favorite places, and I've mentioned this before, was the Burj Al Arab, the massive hotel in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, that's shaped like a sail. It's on a man-made island. You get picked up in three luxury cars, and we stayed in the Royal Suite. I remember sleeping in my own room within the Royal Suite. There were multiple rooms. Uh, the square footage is beyond what uh, most people will ever own if they had two homes put together. And it was $25,000 per night to stay in the Royal Suite. And the hotel has actual gold all throughout it, literally thousands and thousands of tons of gold. You can look this up. It's legit. And then we had an entourage with us. And so there were other suites that we had for uh, what was a layover on our way to go and serve in India, in Mumbai, for that crusade in 2004. All right, so there you have it. Benny Hinn is exploiting the poor and the desperate in order to fund a lavish lifestyle for himself and for his companions. That certainly seems to fit into the category of being covetous to me. But with that, let's let him continue with his teaching. 
Now listen, I told you many times, I want to say it again. Any prophecy that is outside re redemption is psychic. Anything outside redemption is psychic. So when someone says to you something like, well, so-and-so is going to be president, you have to ask, what has this got to do with my redemption or the church's redemption? Or so-and-so is going to be a movie star. What has this got to do with redemption? Or you're going to get a, a raise or whatever. You're going to get more money. Mm -hmm. What has this got to do with my redemption? So it's all bordered by redemption. And a lot of the prophecy today goes outside redemption. All right, so very clearly, Benny Hinn says it's a bad thing if somebody is giving a prophetic word outside of redemption, meaning their prophecy doesn't have anything to do with Jesus or his work on the cross. Now, what's really interesting is he even gives a very specific example of somebody who might prophesy that a particular person is going to end up being the president. Well, if that is the case, then we should not expect to find any video evidence of Benny Hinn interviewing somebody who calls themselves a a prophet and asking them about who is going to be president in the future. He said this, he said, in the vision that he gave me on February 12th, he said, look, what do you see? I said, Lord, it's 2024. He said, look, what do you see? And I saw the words. Are you ready for the word? He said, it's payback. Right. And then watch this. Wreck come pence. Come on. Say it again. Wreck come pence. Wow. Pay attention. Why do you think God allowed a man to be raised up with the name Trump? Which the Lord said something. He said, I'm standing in the midst of the man, and my spirit is attached to him, and I'm putting Trump, and I'm calling it triumph, with I'm standing in the middle. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Why do you think there's the word pence? Because there's something of God's plan. If we pray and cooperate with yes, God Jesus. prophetically, you always have to mix the prophetic with, with prayer. prayer. Can I ask you then? Are you saying to us if we pray that Pence will be president? Yes. I'm saying wreck of Pence. <laughs> and, it's, and the name Pence means more than just it's part of the... I had to ask that. Now, you'll notice how Benny Hinn did not rebuke Hank Kuhneman or say anything to him about, brother, this prophecy doesn't have anything to do with redemption. No, Benny Hinn was leaning in and wanting to know more. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but Matt, Benny Hinn himself did not give the prophetic word that was outside of redemption. Well, you're right in that case, but not in these. The Spirit tells me Fidel Castro will die in the 90s. Oh my. Some will try to kill him and they will not succeed. But there will come a change in his physical health and he will not stay in power. And Cuba will be visited of God. I'll give you a little piece of news that I felt in my soul yesterday. Someone will come up for a cure for that coronavirus. Guaranteed. I know it by the Holy Ghost, so relax. Okay? Just calm down. It'll probably kill about 5,000 people. That's what I felt from the Lord. It's kind of, kind of timber down. It'll be all done. But Frankly, thousands will die. When it, when it hits 5,000, it'll change, it'll shift. There'll be, there'll be a breakthrough after that. So, Benny, what did those prophetic words have to do with redemption? That's right, they didn't. By the way, I would also note that neither of those prophetic words came true. Very interesting. We'll keep that in mind as we go to our next teaching from Benny Hinn. But let me just add one more thing that I need to say. If you don't know, then you have to ask another question. Because the Bible says, Paul wrote, he says it's for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So if it's not something that's edifying you, or that, that is to build you up in the spirit, or to exhort you, to strengthen your, wor your walk with God, or to comfort you, it's not the Lord. Mm -hmm. If it brings fear, it's not the Lord. Or questions, it's not the Lord. Or confusion, it's absolutely not the Lord. All right, Benny, so you say prophecy needs to be encouraging, exhorting, and edifying. Please show us how it's done. The Lord also tells me to tell you in the mid-90s, about 94, 95, no later than that. 
God will destroy the homosexual community of America. But he will not destroy it with what many minds have thought him to be. He will destroy it with fire. And many will turn and be saved, and many will rebel and be destroyed. You know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Didn't seem very encouraging to me. All right, let's let him continue on with his next standard that he has set down for how you know whether or not somebody is a false prophet. Woe to the shepherds of Israel that feed themselves. Hmm. When have you heard a people that prophesy really know how to teach the Bible? If they don't know how to teach the word, they're not true prophets. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll ignore the fact that the scripture that Benny Hinn was using there, he was actually taking out of context, and we'll just focus on the main point that he had, which is that if you want to be a true prophet, you need to be able to rightly teach God's word. Well, I know Benny Hinn does a lot of teaching, but does it line up with sound doctrine? I mean, surely he wouldn't teach, you know, heresy or anything like that. God the Father, ladies and gentlemen, is a person, and he is a triune being by himself, separate from the Son and the Holy Ghost. So what did you say? Hear it, hear it, hear it. See, God the Father is a person. God the Son is a person. God the Holy Ghost is a person. But each one of them is a triune being by himself. If I can shock you, and maybe I should, there's nine of them. Adam was a super being when God created him. The scriptures declare clearly that he had dominion over the fowls of the air, the fish of the sea, which means he used to fly. May I say it like this? You are a little god on earth running around. Thus far, certainly does not seem like Benny Hinn is doing a very good job of living up to his own standards. But let's let him continue and see if it gets any better from here. In Romans 16, 17, and 18, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offense, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ with their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. Now, doesn't that fit with them speaking good words, fair speech? Yes. Yeah. But it's not the word of God coming out of them. It's just good words. All will be well. All, and they, they give you the, you know, God says, you, you, you're going to prosper. You're going to be blessed. Da, da, da. The, just good words, fair speeches, but they deceive the heart of the simple. All right, so a false prophet is somebody who would just tell you good things, a.k.a. the things that you want to hear. And Benny Hinn gave some specific examples, saying, all is well. You are going to prosper in everything. I think by this point, you can probably tell where this is going. And thank God he will prosper you. Because you have an amazing financial destiny. Because our economic heritage is much greater than just paying our bills and meeting our needs. Because what God has promised us is so powerful, it's greater, much greater, than just having enough money to pay our bills, having enough money to meet our needs. It's way more than that. All right, Benny, let's listen to you. Tell us what we should be looking out for next. And then here's, here's uh, another one that I think is very important. And that's uh, in Deuteronomy. And that's very clear. And look what, what Moses had to say. All right. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20. It says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, that prophet will die. Wow. Now that's scary stuff. So anyone who prophesies and they're not speaking by the Lord, 
they can bring destruction to their own life. And then God says now, and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word? So if you people say, well, how do we know? That's quite, it's very clear here in verse 22. It says, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Mm -hmm. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You'll not be afraid of him. All right, this is one of the rare times where I can agree with Benny Hinn. Deuteronomy 18 does indeed tell us that one of the ways we will recognize false prophets is if someone is prophesying in the name of the Lord and it does not come to pass. Now, this is interesting because we've already looked at a couple of examples of Benny Hinn doing that exact same thing. But for good measure, we're going to listen to a recent prophetic word that was given by Benny Hinn where he was prophesying that peace was going to come to Israel. And unfortunately for him, he gave that prophecy right before war broke out with Israel and Gaza. But let's check it out. For the first time, we are going to see these nations come together in peace. I have amazing news for you. But I'm going to wait till you all come on. Prophetic news. This is a prophetic alert that is remarkable. What the Lord is doing is amazing. And I'm here to tell you, peace will come between the Palestinians and the Israelis. How? Only God knows. But it's going to have to happen for you know, a short time, even if not, maybe a little longer. This is going to be a global revival because now Israel is making peace with its neighbors. I mean, this guy is just failing every single one of the standards that he has put forward. But let's see if he can possibly redeem himself here at the end. That's verse 3. It says what? And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now, though that word feigned means deceptive. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. What it says here is these individuals who are false prophets are greedy. Yeah. They're doing it for money. Anyone doing it for money, don't even listen to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they ask you for an offering, yes. once they prophesy, run. All right, so Benny has come full circle, and we now have gone back to him talking about people deceiving you, and they're doing so because they are greedy for gain. Let's see how this one plays out. Costihin blames that on what's known as the prosperity gospel. The theology it's estimated has earned his uncle as much as a hundred million dollars a year. Yeah, so the way that the prosperity gospel works is that if you believe in Jesus and you follow Jesus, that he is going to make you happy, healthy, and wealthy. The problem is it's just like a Ponzi scheme. The only guy getting rich is the guy at the top. All right, guys, as we wrap up, I want to point out the fact that Scripture tells us that false teachers will simultaneously deceive others while they themselves are being deceived. I bring that up because you may ask, does Benny Hinn know what he is doing? I have no idea at what point he knows what he is doing and at what point he does not know. I don't know if he recognizes that he has failed his own standards and he's going to talk about it anyways in hopes that people just don't bring up his past. Or maybe he is so deceived that he doesn't even recognize that he is speaking about himself when he talks about a false prophet. Either way, we see this man very clearly is a false teacher and a false prophet. You see it from his very own standards that he has put forth. And I bring this up because maybe you're watching this video and maybe you have been associated with Benny Hinn, his ministry. You think that he's a great man of God. But I mean, here, I hope it was very plain and simple. You can see that he does not live up to his own standard. He uses a lot of language that might sound really good. And you're like, wow, listen to him call out false prophets. Listen to him talk about false prophecy. And maybe you've never recognized the fact that he is the very thing that he is warning against. And so my heart in doing this is that you will hopefully turn away from him and his ministry. Okay, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you today. If it was helpful and you want to get more content like this out to people on YouTube, please make sure you take a second now to subscribe to my channel. 
Also, if you would like to partner together with me financially in ministry, you can do so by checking out the links that I will put down below in the description. I do not promise you prosperity or any sort of great blessing, but it certainly does help me in my efforts to get more of this content out to other people so that by God's grace, hopefully they will come out of deception and embrace the truth. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, God bless.